I made this video not to show you the usual how to get things done, how uh, to have workarounds, how the different tools work, the usual videos that I do. But I've done this video to inspire those of us who are in a 2D space, who are working with uh, Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer and Publisher. There are a lot of people that are brilliant at it and that's what you should be focusing on. But while you're busy focusing on that, give some thought to some of the 3D space. And the reason I say that is almost all the people that moved across into the 3D world were sometime along their career, sort of graphic designers were working with Photoshop and Illustrator way back in the day. Photoshop and Illustrator, Adobe literally have brought in a whole lot of 3D editing features into Adobe's products and but it's so clumsy because they're trying to be all things to all people. I think the set of company is doing brilliantly in keeping things clean. Yes, you have the full integration of uh, the set of range, the designer, photo and publisher, but they are not kind of wanting to be a 3D program. And I think that is wise to do. However, with the advent of Blender 2.8, now Blender has been around for years. Blender is now matured and is an excellent program to get into. I use Cinema 4D for many years and I use SketchUp, but Blender now has become really awesome and it's easier to get your hang around. So I'm not going to be teaching you Blender. I just want to inspire you to go and learn. Uh, there's thousands of tutorials online, but study Blender 2.8 and up and you'll get it. So the idea came from the fact that if a client has a table like this, for example, and they're selling uh, these tables, they might ask you to put a, maybe it's a unique product that doesn't exist that they want to put in there. And then you have in your arsenal, you have the ability to bring in a 3D model. Also with packaging, with different other stuff, you know, the, the, you don't have to model everything. There's thousands of great models out there. You just need to get it into Blender, texture it, put on materials, add the lighting according to where you're going to be utilizing it. And it's A for a way. So literally, this, this is what I've just put on here. So there we have. Um, just look here, for example, there's a shadow. That shadow comes from Blender. It's based on the light that's shining from this side. This material, the glass on the handle, this metal, everything here is literally brought from Blender. This reflection here is done in Photo. So I could bring this object in now. It's of course doesn't look totally convincing because in this object you don't have the reflectivity of the table coming up. The material looks a bit too clean, etc., etc. But the idea is not to get an award-winning uh, 3D model into your setup because that's where your creativity comes. It's just to inspire you to start thinking about that. Okay, so um, if I open up photo, this is literally what I sit with. Now the program will be slightly sluggish because I'm running the Blender rendering engine in the background and it's busy real-time rendering and I'm recording. Hopefully you start to think now like, okay, in my spare time, maybe let me learn some 3D modeling because the 3D modeling will give you a bit of ambient occlusion under the thing you're showing that it's sitting on a surface, the little shadow here, the proper reflectivity. You, in the handle, you see there's a light, little bit of um, light area over there, specular and here, and they all will match up based on the 3D engine that is working which is Blender. So let me just pop over to Blender to show you what we're working with. So this is the 3D model and I can fiddle with it. So I've used this table, which I've zoomed closely because that's my only point of interest. I want to create this to be sitting on this table. So I'll align, there's different ways of doing it, but I'll align this, this grid to the table. Um, and there's a few things that you be, be aware of when you're doing this. But that's related to Blender and that's what you can learn along the way. So I'm in a what we call a dev mode, which is you're viewing it in a non-real-time rendering. Then you can switch on the renderer, which is what they call cycles renderer. And at this point here, you can see the light coming from it. I can go to the sun and I can say maybe the light needs to go in another direction. I can move the light around, I could rotate the light and do all of those sort of stuff. When I'm happy with it, I go and render, it will 
not render the stable and not render anything through yet. We'll just take the shadow and this object. Uh, let's just switch this render thing off because I don't want it to to slow my actual screen recording. So the the point is is that at this stage, you you're working in a 3D space. You can come in easily, change colors of stuff. Uh, if I go in there, I maybe want a blue top. This is glass. This handle I can change. Say so the client says, "Oh, can you put a purple handle on it?" You literally come here, do it, and you render it. If if the client says, for example, they they want this thing, but they they want it, um, let's say it's got to be rotated at a specific angle. I can go and do a rotation on it. Okay, I'm just moving it independently, but you can position it quite differently for how you're doing it. And, and this is all the 3D space that you're working. So point, hopefully the point is made. Start looking into, I would say Blender. It is, it is really awesome. It, it does this, it does compositing, it does video editing, it does particle simulation, motion graphics, everything. I'm not into all the other fancy stuff. But I'm looking into how I can incorporate these 3D models in a composite. Now, if you want to put this thing on the table, this photo of a table, you can do it inside Blender. But for us using Affinity, Designer and Photo, it will be great to come in here, position the object that you want on that table, render it out as a transparent thing and just come inside and place it on the object. I think I've got another one, which is just a little, uh, I think it's a... A ball yeah so I'm gonna just take this object um, and I can put it down so there we go so this is just a ball I put into blender added lights now you can of course see that the reflection here is white at the bottom so it doesn't represent here but the point taken that you'll do all inside of uh, blender place this at the bottom of the table so here's where I want you to start thinking think about the possibility of creating 3D, pulling it over into your 2D space and merging them together. You've got enough post-production tools to make the stuff blend in nicely, but at least you now can get into the world of 3D. Um, you might find yourself spending more time in the 3D world, but the initial curve, the learning curve is maybe steeper than, than you'd want to, but don't just discard it. Don't think I'm going to create every single thing inside of uh, the 2D program like Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo. Think about the 3D space and integrate them. So yeah, let's let's increase the world of 3D. Hopefully this inspires you and uh, let's go on this journey together. It would be very, very exciting. So have a fantastic day and God bless.